Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi thriller movie called The Butterfly Effect. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie opens with a seven-year-old boy named Evan who lives with his mother, Andrea. His father is locked up in a mental hospital, and his mom is raising him alone. One day, while dropping him off at school, Andrea is stopped by a concerned-looking teacher. She then brings out Evan's drawing, which depicts a man holding a knife next to two bodies covered in blood. Both women are disturbed by the picture, but when Evan is confronted, he claims that he has no memory of drawing it. The next day, a worried Andrea takes her son to the doctor, where he undergoes an extensive brain scan. When the test results come back, the doctor doesn't find any abnormalities in his brain. However, he suggests that the boy keep a journal to remember things better. Following this, Evan starts keeping a diary and journaling his daily activities. One day, he goes to hang out with his best friend Kaylee and her older brother, Tommy. While the kids are playing, Kaylee's father, George, arrives and asks if they want to star in a Robin Hood movie. He says that they must keep it a secret and can't tell anyone about it. The kids excitedly agree, but at this moment, Evan suddenly blacks out. He later finds himself in the basement with both him and Kaylee naked and George filming them. Evan has no memory of what happened and asks Kaylee about it, but she seems too distressed to respond. Coincidentally, I blacked out this part of the plot from the first time I saw this. Because of his frequent blackouts, Andrea gets worried and once again consults with the doctor. The latter responds that it could be caused by stress, which could be the result of missing a father figure in his life. They then decide it might be a good idea to let the boy visit his father, hoping it will help improve his condition. In the next scene, Evan arrives at a mental facility where his father Jason is locked up. He's then led to a room where his handcuffed dad is waiting for him. At first, Jason appears to be normal, and the two start chatting well. However, Evan soon experiences another blackout. When he wakes up, he finds himself on the floor while his father is trying to strangle him. The guards rush to stop him, and during the struggle, Jason hits his head on the floor and dies. The scene then cuts to six years later, where we see a teenage Evan who is still very close to Kaylee and Tommy. They've also befriended another guy named Lenny. One day, Tommy finds a stick of dynamite in his father's basement and shows it to his friends. This gives the four kids a mischievous idea, and they place the stick in the mailbox of a large mansion. They then rush to a distance and wait for the explosion. But at this crucial moment, Evan has another blackout, and when he awakens, he finds himself running into the forest with his friends. It's obvious that something terrible has happened, but Evan can't remember, and no one else tells him. Lenny is so traumatized by the incident that he has a seizure and is transported in an ambulance. A few days later, Evan, Kaylee, and Tommy go to see a movie in the theater. However, Kaylee seems disturbed for some reason and heads outside, with Evan following her. One thing leads to another, and they eventually end up kissing. But just then, Tommy appears and becomes enraged to see them together. He takes out his rage on a nearby teenager by brutally assaulting him with a pole. As Tommy is being ushered out of the theater, we can see a sadistic smile on his face. Days later, Lenny is released from the hospital, and Evan and Kaylee visit him. The three of them go for a walk and soon come across Tommy, who has kidnapped Evan's dog and put it in a bag. He threatens to set the dog on fire because he is still angry at Evan for kissing his sister. Evan tries to stop him but is beaten and suffers another blackout. When he wakes up, he notices Kaylee is injured and Lenny is crying next to the burned bag that contained his dog. I remember thinking my childhood was tragic when I couldn't have my GameCube until Christmas. Christmas. In the aftermath of this incident, Evan's mom has had enough and decides to leave the town with her son. This devastates Kaylee, but before leaving, Evan promises that he'll come back for her someday. The scene then cuts to seven more years later, where we see Evan in college studying psychology. He is a diligent student and is obsessed with understanding how human memory works. It turns out that he hasn't experienced a single blackout in seven years, but the sad part is that he has not spoken to Kaylee since. One day, as Evan brings a girl to his dorm, she finds his old journals under his bed. She asks him to read something from them, and Evan reluctantly agrees. He then begins to read about the day Tommy burned his dog, but moments later, he is transported back to the past and sees Tommy setting fire to the dog. Lenny is desperately trying to cut the bag's rope, so Tommy threatens to cut his mother's throat while she sleeps. Evan is shocked to see this, but before he can react, he's transported back to the present. The next day, Evan goes to meet Lenny, who still hasn't been able to recover from his traumatic past and is in a 
kind of a catatonic state. He still lives in his childhood home, compulsively building model airplanes. Evan asks him about the day his dog died, and Lenny reveals how Tommy had threatened to cut his mother's throat. Hearing this, our hero is shocked and realizes that what he experienced earlier was real. Later, Evan reads his journal again and returns to the time when the dynamite exploded. As they await the explosion, Evan accidentally burns his t-shirt with a cigarette, leaving a scar on his stomach. The group then approaches a woman and her baby approaching the mailbox, freaking them out. They try to intervene, but the woman ends up opening the mailbox, killing her and the baby instantly. Lenny is shaken by the incident and stands frozen while his friends urge him to run. At this moment, adult Evan wakes up in his dorm and notices a cigarette burn mark on his body. This makes him realize that he can go back in time and change things. In the evening, Evan returns to his former hometown to see Kaylee, who is now working as a waitress. He then walks with her while she heads home, and they start talking about their lives. After a brief conversation, he asks her about the video her father made years ago, which he can't remember. However, this only enrages Kaylee, and she accuses him of stirring up unpleasant memories. She then bursts into tears and asks why he didn't come to see her all these years. Evan doesn't have an answer, and Kaylee runs away from there, crying. The next day, Evan receives an angry voicemail from Tommy, who wants to know what he told his sister. He says that Kaylee was crying all night, and she unalived herself this morning. Hearing this, Evan is shaken and feels responsible for what happened. Therefore, he decides to go back in time and save her. Later, Evan reads his journal on the day George recorded their video in the basement. He soon transports to the past, where the man asks Evan and Kaylee to do dirty stuff for his movie. However, this time, Evan stands up to the man and speaks to him in an adult tone. He demands that George be respectful to his daughter and never lay a hand on her. He also reveals how his actions are going to traumatize her for the rest of her life, which will eventually lead to her demise. Evan then shouts at him to discipline his sadistic son, Tommy, instead. He probably shouldn't have added that last part. Moments later, he wakes up in the future, but his life is different from before. Evan notices Kaylee by his side and realizes that the two are a couple now. It turns out they study at the same university and are the most popular couple there. Evan is very happy with this reality and feels like it is the perfect life for him. He never even created punk. The world is a better place. In the evening, he plans a romantic dinner for Kaylee and she's very impressed. But moments later, they are interrupted by a friend who reveals to Evan that his car has been destroyed. The couple rushes outside and notices his wrecked car along with his former dog's collar. They then realize that it must be Tommy's work as he has recently been released from jail. Evan is furious, but Kaylee asks him to be understanding as Tommy has suffered a lot. She reveals that her father never touched her, but instead took out his frustration on Tommy. As a result, Tommy became deranged and did a lot of bad things over the years. After this, the couple abandons their romantic dinner and heads to their dorm. However, on the way, Tommy shows up with a bat and begins to attack Evan for dating his sister. They get into a brutal fight, but Evan eventually gains the upper hand and starts to beat him. He unleashes his rage against Tommy for everything he did to him as a child, and eventually kills him. In the following scene, Evan is taken to jail where he meets his cellmate Carlos. Later, his mother visits him and assures him that she'll help him get out of there as soon as possible. She has also brought some of his journals, which he requested. Evan then takes the journals and returns to his cell, hoping to right his wrongs. But he's unexpectedly attacked by some thugs who snatch his journals and start passing it around among themselves. Some guards intervene before things get worse, but the thugs manage to take his journals. Criminals are suckers for gossip. The next day, our hero asks Carlos for his help in confronting the thugs, to which the latter agrees. Evan then heads to the thugs' cell and says that he's willing to do anything they ask as he doesn't want to die. The thugs are delighted to hear this and ask him to please them. Evan gets down on his knees and it appears as if he's going to do it, but all of a sudden he whips out a knife and brutally injures them. At this moment, Carlos also arrives and kicks the thugs out before locking the cell. Evan then immediately opens his journal and begins reading about the day when his dog died. Moments later, he is transported to the day when he, Lenny, and Kaylee are walking in the woods. Carlos, on the other hand, he left behind to be killed by the other thugs for sure. This time, Evan hands Lenny a shard and asks him to cut the rope. Lenny doesn't understand what he means by this, but he keeps the shard anyway. The group soon comes across Tommy. He was about to burn the dog, but Evan convinces him not to go through with it and promises that he won't ever come near his sister again. Surprisingly, the sadistic boy agrees and lets go of the dog. But just then, Lenny shows up 
up behind him and attacks him with the shard, leading to Tommy's death. It turns out the boy misunderstood Evan's orders and thought he was supposed to attack the bully. And in this world, anytime anyone does anything, someone dies. This causes Evan to return to the future and he finds himself in the same dorm room as in the original timeline. It turns out that Lenny's life has been utterly ruined in this reality as he went to jail at a young age. Evan then goes to see Kaylee but discovers that she has become a drug addicted prostitute after her brother's death. He tells her everything about the different timelines and how happy she was in one of them. Shut your dumb ass, bitch, she says. She refuses to believe that she could be a college student. She states that if she could change the past, she would save the mother and baby who were caught up in the explosion. Afterward, Evan decides to go back to the day of the explosion incident. This would prevent Tommy from dying, Lenny from being jailed, and Kaylee from being traumatized. But Evan will probably end up getting his dick blown off or some shit. He then soon arrives at the past where they're waiting for the explosion. The woman and her baby approach the mailbox, but this time Evan runs towards the dynamite with Tommy following him. Tommy then pushes the woman and child to the ground while Evan is hit by the explosion. Oh, was I right? Seconds later, he returns to the future and realizes that his roommate is Lenny, who is now dating Kaylee. Even more shocking is the fact that his arms were amputated in the explosion. Meanwhile, Tommy has become religious after everything that happened and is a good guy now. Evan notices that every everyone is happy in this reality, so he decides to stay here. Later, he talks with Kaylee alone and asks if she ever considered dating him. She responds that she thought a lot about it, as he was the first person she cared about. But he doesn't have arms, so… Kaylee also reveals that when her parents divorced, she had the option to stay with either her mom or dad. But since she wanted to be close to Evan, she chose her father. Regardless, she clarifies that she's in a relationship with Lenny now and is happy because he has arms. Upon hearing this, Evan becomes so depressed that he decides to end it all. He later tries to drown himself in the bathtub, but is saved by Tommy in the nick of time. After the incident, Tommy takes him to meet his mother, and Evan discovers that she's very sick, which wasn't the case in the other timelines. He then learns that after he mutilated his arms, she started smoking, which eventually led to her lung cancer. This makes Evan feel very guilty, and he promises his mother that he will fix everything. Now he has a selfless excuse to get his arms back. He may still not get Kaylee, but at least he'll be able to glove his turkey once more. Afterward, Evan reads his journal again and goes back to the time when George was recording them in the basement. He asks the man not to touch his kids and also threatens to report him to Child Protective Services. Evan then takes the dynamite from the basement to destroy it. He lights it to threaten George, but the man manages to knock it out of his hand. Unfortunately, Kaylee picks it up and the cartridge explodes, resulting in her death. Evan sucks at this. When Evan returns to the future again, he is locked up in a psychic psychiatric institution because of Kaylee's death. He asks the doctor for his journals so he can sort everything out. However, the doctor informs him that the journals don't exist and that they were just created in his mind in response to the guilt of killing Kaylee. He reveals that his dad, Jason, also used to do the same thing and obsess over non-existent photo albums. Hearing this, Evan realizes that any recording from the past is sufficient to enable travel back. Later, when Andrea comes to visit, he asks her about the home movies from his childhood and she promises to bring them to him. In the next scene, Evan makes a desperate attempt to change the past one last time and heads to the doctor's office. He then plays the video that his brother has brought him. The video shows her in the hospital just before she was about to give birth to him. Witnessing this, a sudden realization hits Evan. His friends will never have a good future if he continues to change the past. How can he be sure of that? Therefore, when he arrives in the past, he strangles himself with his umbilical cord, unaliving himself. How did he do that? <laughs> this completely erases him from the timeline and finally puts an end to the curse. In the final scene, a series of memories flash before him as his friends and family live a happy life in his absence. Kaylee and Tommy move in with their mother, which stops their father from abusing them and ruining their lives. Lenny is no longer traumatized and is very happy with his life. Andrea has eventually remarried and has a baby. The movie then ends with Tommy graduating from college and Kaylee getting married. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.